assalamu alaikum and good evening at the same time good night to you all i would like to give thanks to the organizer at the same time i would like to show my due respect to my professor and teacher professor masood begum who is uh, working as professor of hematology in our department at the same time she is also working as dean faculty of medicine so i am delighted to be here in today's presentation learn it online audience i am welcome you to participate and enjoy on today's presentation overview of thalassemia thalassemia one of the one of the big burden of our country and first of all i would like to say what is thalassemia thalassemia is a group of inherited clobin disorders which is characterized by reduced or absent synthesis of normal hemoglobin chains so it is inherited hemoglobin disorder these uh, this is two type one is thalassemia another is hemoglobinopathies and thalassemia related to reduced production of the polypeptide chain alpha or beta globin chain and hemoglobinopathies is one of the defect which is related to the structural defect of thalassemia minimum of thalassemia is is a greek word thalassa and and there is hema first it is recognized by kodi and lee in 1925 So, what is the epidemiology of thalassemia? Before going to my presentation, we would like to know the incidence of thalassemia in our country at the same time, wide perspective. In every year, all over the world, fifty thousand thalassemic patients born with severe thalassemia, and some of them beta thalassemia major. and some of them hemoglobin e beta beta thalassemia both of them are mostly transfusion dependent transfusion dependent and the highest carrier frequency of beta thalassemia is reported in maldives it is about 18% and in cyprus 14% and south east asia it is about 3 to 5% this slide shows the distribution of thalassemia all over the world in a map and we know the thalassemia hemoglobin c and sickle cell anemia is in the african country incidence is more and in southeast asia hemoglobin e and beta thalassemia incidence is more so what about the incidence of thalassemia in our country we don't have any specific or accurate registration of thalassemia according to world health organization may different papers showed different type of incidence but from where i have collected the information it is about 3% of the population in our country carrying beta thalassemia and 4% carriers hemoglobin e in bangladesh in another publication 4.1% prevalence of the beta thalassemia trait and 6.1% prevalence for hemoglobin e trait it is presumed that approximately 6000 thalassemic children are born each year in bangladesh so we can easily imagine how many burden we have related to their thalassemia this is another slide which shows distribution of the patient according to the division in russia division thalassemia beta uh, thalassemia minor and hemoglobin e distribution is about 5.5 to 16.5% and the incidence of beta thalassemia in chitong beta thalassemia trait 2.5 and 2.9 and 2.9 and these are the distribution uh, not only it is representing a, a, a few districts it's a sample of or it's a just Uh, just a natural uh, incidence of thalassemia in our country so we need large scale thalassemia registration in nationwide so if we classify thalassemia genotypic classification that means uh, the thalassemia is developed due to genetic defect 
is as because it is hereditary, we can classify it as alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. And alpha thalassemia, you know, the gene which is uh, related to the uh, development of uh, the alpha thalassemia, this is uh, chromosome 16 defect. And in case of beta thalassemia, the gene responsible gene is chromosome 11. Due to the defect of these genes, there is deficiency of the polypeptide chains, alpha polypeptide chain or beta polypeptide chain, inadequate production or absent of production of the polypeptide chains. So when thalassemia expressed as a, as a disease state, we can classify it as like beta thalassemia major, severe hemoglobin E beta thalassemia and hemoglobin birds. Thalassemia intermedia in between thalassemia major and minor, the clinical presentation in, in between and uh, transmission dependent and not uh, non uh, transmission uh, dependent thalassemia. These are beta thalassemia intermedia and milder and moderate forms of hemoglobin A beta thalassemia and hemoglobin A disease. Phenotypic classification also beta thalassemia trait, alpha thalassemia trait, alpha beta thalassemia trait, hemoglobin lipo. And when a patient is suffering from this type of thalassemia, their clinical presentation will be mild, milder, not so severe. Clinically, you can classify thalassemia as like transmission dependent thalassemia and non transmission dependent thalassemia. Non transmission dependent thalassemia is a group of thalassemia for patients does not require lifelong regular cell transmission for their survival. And sometimes they require uh, transmission uh, in occasional uh, uh, during growth failure, pregnancy infection, and specific situations. Thalassemia can be categorized also into different forms, beta thalassemia intermedia, hemoglobin E beta thalassemia, and hemoglobin H disease. Inheritance of thalassemia. Thalassemia is inherited as an autosomal recessive disorder. When, a, when parents are healthy, all the children born in a good health, all the children will be healthy. When one of a, of a family in between husband or wife, if wife is a carrier, then 50% will be healthy and 50% will be a thalassemia trait. When both uh, parents are carrier, 25% will be thalassemia, will develop thalassemia, and 50% and be a thalassemia trait, and 25% will be healthy. So we just would like to motivate the people of our country not to marry in between uh, a two thalassemia trait. Pathophysiology of thalassemia, this absence or decreased production of one or more globin chains. And in case of hemoglobin pathis, that is formation of abnormal hemoglobin structure. And due to this abnormality and genetic defect or mutation, blood cells are produced. And this is a, this uh, blood cells formation is a type of ineffective erythropoiesis. Right? Cells are not, uh, not uh, perform their normal activities. And excessive RBCs destruction occur due to defect, uh, lack of polypeptide chain production or inadequate production of polypeptide chain and structural defect of hemoglobin causes premature destruction of red blood cells. And the patient, those who are thalassemic, they develop anemia. And due to destruction and, uh, and blood transmission, the iron overload develops within their body. And to fulfill the requirement of the hemoglobin and oxygen carrying demand, extramedullary hematopoiesis may occur. Erythropoiesis may occur uh, other than uh, bone marrow from liver, spleen, and other sides. So all of you wanted to know what are the clinical presentations of thalassemia. Thalassemia whole shorir ki ki poribartan kate. Features of thalassemia major, usually they present within two years of age so the, this this patient, thalassemia major patient, 
develop severe anemia. Some few patients develop anemia at the age of six months, and within two years, they develop severe anemia. Failure to thrive sometimes, and pallor jaundice, and their spleen will be enlarged. And sometimes, and most of the time, bony expansion causing frontal bulging and malar pronis. So facial expression will be changed and thalassemia faces will develop. How can we diagnose thalassemia patient? Very simply, if we do CBC and peripheral blood film, from CBC and peripheral blood film, we may found low hemoglobin level, MCV and MCAs. Peripheral blood film will represent microcytosis and hypochromia, sometimes anisocytosis, poikilocytosis. There are changes within the RBCs. And uh, these are the evidence of uh, thalassemia when we examine a blood film. Nucleated red blood cell, that is immature red blood cell, we may found in the peripheral part. This is the picture of uh, peripheral uh, blood uh, from, uh, from a patient with thalassemia. How we can diagnose, we do peripheral blood film and CBC at the same time, we have to do iron profile. And from the iron profile, especially serum ferritin will reveal the excessive accumulation of iron in different vital organs of the body. And non-invasive invasion we can do uh, MRI, that is fairy scan uh, of liver and heart that will help us to assess a patient regarding iron overload within the body. Hemoglobin, after doing CBC and peripheral blood film, if a patient is suspected as, a, as, a, as thalassemia, we will do hemoglobin electrophoresis for specific diagnosis. These are the findings which will help us to categorize the thalassemia, beta thalassemia, alpha thalassemia, beta thalassemia major, and beta thalassemia. These are the laboratory findings from Hemoglobin electrophoresis will get this type of findings and after proper interpretation with the hematologist or experts of expert laboratory personnel can interpret and categorize the thalassemic patient accordingly. So one of the important that is for the confirmation of thalassemia, we, we can do DNA analysis to take the cleavage gene mutation. These are the specific test. And antenatal diagnosis, this antenatal diagnosis will be done for uh, thalassemia prevention purpose. That's when a parent's father or mother having thalassemia gene or carrier uh, in between, marriage in between two carrier, there is a pre chance uh, to develop a baby uh, with thalassemia. So this type of, uh, this, this parent, this type of parents, if they want to know whether their child uh, be, is becoming thalassemic or not, we can suggest them uh, to do coronary pillar sampling in between nine to 11 weeks of pregnancy. And the test, sometimes we can do amniosynthesis, cardiosynthesis at 16 to 18 weeks of pregnancy. This will help us if a baby develop or if a, a baby become thalassemic, then we may suggest them therapeutic abortion, it will help us for the prevention of thalassemia. At the same time, one of the latest uh, way to diagnose or to uh, prevent thalassemia, that is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. We can do, or we can suggest pre uh, in vitro fertilization. Then from the, uh, from the, from few embryos, we can identify which embryo is thalassemia free. That embryo will be implanted uh, within the uterus of the mother. And uh, in this way, we can have our thalassemic couple uh, can have their baby with uh, no thalassemia and it will help us to prevent thalassemia. So what are the management of thalassemia? Simply, everybody knows that thalassemic patient needs blood transfusion. That is blood transfusion. If we found iron overload, we can treat the excessive iron from the body at the same time management of the complications. Our second speaker will brief it nicely. What are the complications related to the, uh, to the endocrine 
endocrinology or endocrinopathy and splenectomy one of the option and there is some criteria when we do splenectomy and hemopathy stem cell transplantation another updated management but it is expensive it is not easy it is not available for everyone what are the future plans for future treatment plans in gene therapy it is really a shame not effective yet now uh, in many of the countries uh, of the world so uh, we may think about but to do gene therapy is really uh, ongoing and we have to wait for a long time Criteria for initiating transmission therapy. When we will give transmission, must have to decide the proper time of transmission. We do some investigation. First of all, we have to confirm whether the patient is thalassemic or not. Then subsequently, we will do hemoglobin, CBC, and peripheral blood film. And uh, from the CBC peripheral blood film, uh, we have to uh, think about whether the hemoglobin level is 7 gram per TL, uh, on two occasions or more than two weeks apart, two shop the contributory causes such as infection, we have to uh, treat infection uh, before uh, uh, giving uh, blood transfusion for a thalassemic patient. Criteria for initiating transfusion therapy: clinical criteria, irrespective of hemoglobin level, significant symptoms of anemia if present, if there is poor growth or failure to try, try. And if there's complications from excessive intramedullary hematopoiesis, such as pathological fracture or facial changes, that means there is uh, changes in the faces due to thalassemia, this mongolic faces. Clinically significant intramedullary hematopoiesis is uh, another uh, causation. Recommendation recommended for the treatment of transcription dependent thalassemia is lifelong regular blood transfusion, usually administration every two to five weeks to maintain the pre-transmission hemoglobin level is 9.5 or 10.5 gram uh, per GL. So a higher target pre-transmission hemoglobin level of 11 to 12 gram per GL may be appropriate for patients with heart disease. So if a thalassic patient have heart disease, we, might, we may have to think about transmission um, strategy a little bit different. Another important issue is iron relation. So proper and methodical blood transmission after proper screening mm -hmm. and cross missing, when we will diagnose, we'll found iron overload. The criteria is when more than 1,000 nanogram per GL, and or patient has received 50 to 20 transfusion, and when hepatic iron concentration exceeds 3.2 milligram per gram triweight, it is uh, not commonly practiced in our country or all over the world. So one of the important non-invasive investigation that is that is uh, MRI of liver and heart, that is very scan. We have to develop various kind of facilities in our premises. premises. That means at Bangamundi Shek Medical University or Medical Cause in other places. The goal of the iron inclination is to reduce the iron store and subsequently maintain at low level of serum protein less than 1000 nanogram uh, per ml. But these are the common iron chelating agents. And there is oral form and IV form. Just for examine and is an IV form and a subcutaneous form and deferiprone and deferatirox. Uh, it's in uh, oral form. And recently, uh, there is shortage or there is uh, uh, space, no supply of desferoxamine in our country right now. So we have to make it available for the thalassic patient in our uh, in our country. So I am drawing attention. Uh, attention from our health authority and the respective person to make available this breakthrough in for the thalassic patient in our country. Complications of iron overload. This is the common complications of iron overload. In one session, it is not possible to discuss all about the complications. Today, our next presenter will, uh, will uh, give a brief uh, discussion on uh, endocrinological complications. And 
And due to thalassemia and adenovalor fibrosis, cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma also may develop. This is one of the another option uh, of you know, for the thalassemic patient. When we do split to for the thalassemic patient, when gradually blood transfusion uh, receiving uh, amount will be gradually increased. That means 200 to 220 ml of red cells uh, uh, per kg per year. And due to hyperspin spin will uh, become more larger, that will cause a mechanical problem, sometimes one or uh, two cell uh, deficient. That is uh, uh, sometimes uh, bicytopenia, thrombocytopenia uh, may develop and symptomatic spinectomy. In this situation, we may think about uh, spinectomy. Before spinectomy, uh, uh, before two weeks, uh, of course, vaccination should have to be done to prevent the infection of uh, capsulated organism. At the same time, post spinectomy management, one of the important issues, thrombocytosis may develop, thromboembolism prevention and management should have to. Sometimes pulmonary hypertension may develop. We don't have specific pulmonary hypertension management facilities in our uh, country right now. So another important treatment modalities is hemopoietic you know, stem cell transplantation. And in our country, we are also trying Maybe one or two mm -hmm. cases already been done, uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, say allogenic stem cell transplantation. Young patient, less than 17 years old, or it is better to do seven to 10 years uh, within, uh, with a beta thalassemia, beta plus or beta zero genotype having an ACLA compatible sibling or 10 by 10 mass volunteer donor. It is very difficult to do bone marrow transplant bone marrow transplant for a thalassemia patient because nowadays in our country, every family uh, has the, has one or two child. So so fi to find out donor is very difficult for the thalassemia patient uh, if we would like to do uh, allogenic bone marrow transplantation. So uh, haploidentical or mismatched or unrelated donor and, or we can source donor from the donor registry. So we need to develop uh, bone marrow transplantation donor registry in our country also. So I would like to propose today's um, organizers uh, to uh, give a message to the authority or to uh, spread these messages all over the country. We need to develop donor registry for bone marrow transplantation so that in crisis period, we can try to find out donors from the donor registry. Another important issue is uh, gene therapy. Uh, I don't want to go elaborate on gene therapy. Gene therapy within uh, it is uh, better to do in between 70 to 55 years. We, we are thinking about uh, theoretically about gene therapy, but it is not available or or uh, it is not easily uh, approachable uh, for all the patients in the country. It is under clinical trial also. And other other few drugs, this is novel and emerging therapies. Is, uh, last but I said, a recombinant fusion protein that binds to a specific ligands of the transforming growth factor beta super family and enhances erythroid ma uh, maturation is the most recently approved therapy uh, for the management of transfusion dependent thalassemia. A recombinant starting dose is one milligram per kg once every three weeks by subcutaneous injection. Other drugs that is uh, fetal hemoglobin inducer, sometimes hydroxyurea and thalidomide we are using for the thalassemic patient also. So what are the take home messages? What message we would like to spread or convey to the nation or the government or the stakeholders for the thalassemia? So we need national thalassemia registry. Our director general of health and health ministry, they, they have tried to develop, they are they're trying um, already. They set up uh, thalassemia registry in the DG of fish and, uh, and uh, really all the stakeholders already prepared a guideline uh, for thalassemia machine in our country. But, but we have to make it effective. And, and, and recently it is time and demanding uh, to make available the drugs for the thalassemia patient and to encourage and to take initiation to do nationwide thalassemia registry uh, through government, uh, through government, and creating awareness. There is no alternative to create awareness related to thalassemia, and population screening is also required. Genetic counseling um, in between the thalassemia patients and 
the uh, the uh, uh, and the children or adolescent or marriage is it uh, population we should have to do genetic counseling prevention of birth of new thalassemia baby uh, is one of the issues so thalassemia addressing thalassemia patient all over the country at the same time diagnosis of the patient screening of the patient and treatment of thalassemic babies and prevention and discourage to marry one thalassemia career with another thalassemia career. And when they develop uh, thalassemia or when they, uh, they uh, one thalassemia career married with another uh, thalassemia career. So we have to counsel them for prenatal diagnosis or pre implantation genetic diagnosis uh, to prevent thalassemia. So, uh, be or share and care. So we would like to prevent thalassemia and we would like to develop our nation thalassemia. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present uh, on thalassemia, present thalassemia over to in today's uh, uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Muhammad Salahuddin Shah for your excellent presentation. Uh, thank you, Chair, Chairperson, Professor Masuda, Madam, uh, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, BSMMU. Uh, I am grateful to Professor Dr. Muhammad uh, Salahuddin Shah for brilliantly presenting the issue and making my presentation easy to describe. So my part, uh, this is uh, thalassemia endocrinopathy. As I am an endocrinologist, so this, this should be my part. Thalassemia endocrinopathy, uh, you all probably are aware of this topic, that this is the, one of the important areas. Uh, thalassemia exposes the body to excess, uh, uh, to, to excess oxygen by uh, decrease of oxygen and excess deposition of iron due to repeated uh, rust transmission. And this will, uh, both ways, the body is... Uh, going to expose the endocrine the endocrine organs to lower their endocrine hormone producing cells. The endocrine dysfunction in thalassemia is among the most common complications and is principally attributed to excessive iron overload and suboptimal chelation. This is the problem uh, almost in the global scenario is almost similar. The prevalence is quite high, particularly in multi-ethnic populations, but determining the prevalence is often difficult due to the widespread heterogeneity of the population and timing of exposure to the chelation therapy. So as we have heard from Dr. Professor Salahuddin Shah that if we can maintain good resistance, so this thalassemia endocrinopathy prevalence can also easily be determined. So uh, the Thalassemia International Federation study group on growth and endocrine com uh, complications reported that hypogonadism was the most common endocrinopathy. Uh, uh, the position uh, was the top with the, around more than 40% of the prevalence, closely followed by growth retardation, uh, around 31%, with hypothyroidism being the least common among the uh, around 4,000 patients. Another study among uh, conducted among 426 patients with thalassemia major showed that the risk of developing an endocrine complication was about 10% in five years, despite adequate chelation. So the type has been described by my uh, preceding speaker, so I'm not going to that, but uh, if we consider the transcription dependent thalassemia and non transcription dependent thalassemia, so the transcription dependent thalassemia patients are vulnerable to develop thalassemia endocrinopathy. Although endocrinopathies are the third most common cause of death in patients with thalassemia major, only half of them consult an endocrinologist. This should also be very much uh, very seriously considered. So the teamwork should come forward. Treatment of endocrinopathy in thalassemia is complex due to multi-system involvement and lack of appropriate guidelines. So again, we, ha we have heard from Dr. Salahuddin Shah, as I am also one of the part of the thalassemia management guideline from Bangladesh. This is uh, official. 
for the DG health. But uh, again, this should be uh, taken in consideration with the thalassemia endocrinopathies. Collaboration between hematologists, this, is, this, this should be the leader, endocrinologist, hepatologist, cardiologist, and gynecologist is therefore central to the management of this disorder. Now, why this uh, thalassemia endocrinopathy occurs in patients with thalassemia? In thalassemia, excess iron accumulation results from repeated blood transfusions and increased iron absorption due to ineffective erythropoiesis. This leads to increased intracellular and extracellular iron deposition. I will show the figure, which trigger a cascade of events culminating in cell damage, primarily so the generation of reactive oxygen species. Disturbance in growth, pubertal development, abnormal gonadal function, impaired thyroid, parathyroid, and adrenal function, diabetes, and disorderly bone growth are commonly encountered among patients with transfusion-dependent thalassemia, also less frequently in, in non-transfusion-dependent thalassemia. As a consequence, several endocrine glands are affected, resulting in different types of endocrinopathies. The pituitary gland is badly affected, followed by gonads, thyroid, parathyroid, pancreas, and uh, at the nerve at the least. So we can uh, see the intracellular and extracellular uh, hazards due to transfusion dependent thalassemia. The inter intracellular iron toxicity will exceed the capacity of the cells to accommodate the ferritin. That will release intracellular metabolically active iron and catalyzes the formation of free radicals and damage the cell membrane, lipid layer, and macromolecules that will cause cell death. On the other hand, extracellular iron toxicity will cause tissue hypoxia, disorder erythropoiesis, and erythropoiesis secretion, and ineffective erythropoiesis, enormously expanded and active marrow, and that will overexpress the uh, GDF15, this is growth differentiation factor 15, and inhibit hepcidin synthesis, increased rate of iron absorption, and overpowering the catabolic iron and increase transferring and saturation and plasma NTBI, generation of oxygen-free radicals, same to intercellular action and inflammatory cytokines, like one, tumor exposure to alpha and intercellular six, and all will cause cell death and organ failure. So we can, again, if we consider the uh, endocrine gland, how that will be uh, disordered by the accumulation of excess iron, if we consider the bone, the low bone mass will be there with the high risk of fracture, low, low bone turnover, and, and anomalies of the bone densitometry, and also vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, in, uh, consider, if we consider fertility, the iron will play havoc with the gonads, that will, there will be hypoglycemia. For uh, hypothyroid function, there will be primary hypothyroidism as well as secondary hypothyroidism and then secondary adrenal insufficiency. And hypoparathyroidism is also not very uncommon. So uh, overall, there will be growth retardation or growth delay and the pubertal delay and low growth hormone to IGF-1 ratio and glucose profile abnormalities. And many of the patients will have diabetes detected in the, their early life. So the, the transmission dependent thalassemia patient will have the more number to have endocrinopathy and non-transmission dependent thalassemia will be less number. Now, coming to the uh, specific disorder, the hypogonadism. Hypogonadism is the most common endocrinopathy in, in, in trans, uh, thalassemia major, manifested as delayed puberty during adolescence or infertility later on secondary amenorrhea and erectile dysfunction in the dental life, long-term complications include not only sexual dysfunction and infertility, but also osteoporosis and decreased quality of life. You can uh, easily understand the quality of life would be hampered. Iron overload in the pituitary gland and gonads cause low gonadotropic response to gonadotropic releasing hormone as well as low gonadotropic and sex hormone secretion. In addition, pituitary Hemochromatosis is progressive despite in, in intensive chelation, leading to unavoidable hypogonadism. Patients with severe genetic defects have greater inherent iron loading that 
preferentially affect gonads, gonadotrop cell in the pituitary. Defective secretion of growth hormone also has detrimental effects on puberty, not only growth. Liver diseases, chronic hypoxia, and associated endocrine complications such as diabetes and hypothyroidism are also contributing factors in those uh, patients with hypogonadism. The main presenting complaint encounter in the uh, patients with hypogonad hypogonadism or as it is, uh, it may occur before puberty, so the patient will present as delayed puberty. Later on, we can find that this is not a case, a case of pure de delayed puberty. This is the puberty will not onset, and this is the cause of pure high primary hypogonadism. Absence or incomplete development secondary sexual characteristics will be found um, among the patients with 13 to 14 years, 13 years girls and 14 years boys. And secondary sexual characteristics will not be uh, visible uh, within the succeeding five years. So the clinical evaluation should be done in all patients, uh, starting with the standard staging, the breast development in girls and testicular volume, TB in boys. Standard stage 2 indicates onset of puberty. This will be the best part in the girls and the testicular volume. Uh, four millimeter or more in boys indicate that the puberty has been onset. Therefore, absence of breast bud or tuber, uh, t t uh, or testicular volume less than four millimeter indicates absence of pubertal de development. Hypothalamic gonadal axis is assessed by measuring estrogen testosterone ratio or LH and FSH and gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulation test finally. Low sex hormone with raised gonadotropin signals primary gonad failure, whereas low gonadotropins are consistent with pituitary failure. The, so the, we should uh, very clearly determine the condition. Pituitary failure is confirmed with suboptimal response to LA to gonadotropin releasing, uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulation. Uh, the DNR stimulation says not very common, but we are doing in our department. It is important to do liver function test as treatment with estrogen alters liver function. Patients with coexistent liver disease due to secondary hemochromatosis or viral hepatitis should wait until liver function improves before starting estrogen therapy. Hypothyroidism needs to be addressed in the treatment of pubertal delay. And I clearly say that not only the patient with thalassemia and endocrinopathy, in all cases, for the treatment uh, assessment of the pubertal uh, onset, pubertal delay or hypogonadism, uh, thyroid function should be clearly delineated. Treatment depends on age, degree of damage to the hypothalamus and gonads, chronic liver disease and child psychological condition, also the uh, condition of the family uh, participation. Treatment is uh, with estrogen or testosterone supplementation is the principal way as the, the, there is a clear deficiency of the uh, estrogen or testosterone uh, level. As the other patients, low dose with uh, gradual escalation to mimic normal puberty should be given starting as a bone age of 12 years. This is uh, the, not the uh, chronological age. The bone age should be determined by the X-ray. Cyclic progesterone treatment is started after two years of estrogen or when breakthrough bleeding occurs for the girls. Similarly, in boys, 125 milligram testosterone is given, increasing gradually to 250 milligram every uh, three weeks. In Bangladesh, we are uh, getting 250 milligram injection vial, so the half of the vial should be used initially. Treatment is continued lifelong in males and until menopause in females. Uh, growth general staging and ultrasonography are used to monitor progression of puberty. Timely replacement of sex steroid is also important to avoid development of osteoporosis in these individuals. So uh, in a, a growing uh, boy or girl or in young adults, adult, the number one cause next to secondary osteoporosis by gonadotropin, this is the hypogonadotropin. Erectile dysfunction is commonly encountered, so this should be kept in mind and addressed appropriately. Treatment consists of discontinuing offending drugs and correction of contributing conditions. Uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitors such as tadalafil can be prescribed with erectile dysfunction, uh, persist after appropriate other therapies.
it should be noted that thalidomide used in treatment of thalassemia can cause hypergonadotropic hypogonadism with development of small ovarian follicles and low anti-mullerian hormone in females. This does not appear to be related to cumulative dose of the drug. It is usually seen six months after starting therapy and is mostly reversible. However, in some, there was a delay of 18 months. Similarly, it can also affect males in their development of gonad. Now, the growth in thalassemia. Thalassemic children show retardation of growth in the fetal, infantile, and pre-pubertal and pubertal period. This may be due to the growth hormone deficiency. This can be due to hypogonadism, hypothyroidism. This may be due yes. to pan hypopituitarism so everything should be kept in mind not only that the patient who are getting a uh, 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 repeated transfusion the other uh, macro and macro macro uh, nutrient deficiency should also be assessed appropriately pituitary siderosis as evidenced by mri studies showing iron deposition in the pituitary gland and midbrain on mri is the most common structural abnormality one thing should be very clear that the pituitary gland is very much vulnerable to uh, iron deposition or siderosis empty cell and small pituitary gland are also seen on imaging indicating pituitary atrophy these changes are associated with decreased production of growth hormone from hypothalamus and pituitary. Several studies have also shown low IGF-1 in patients with thalassemia. Serum ferritin level greater than 3,000 nanogram per milliliter during the first decades of the life is a predictor of short stressor in adult life. So from the, from the very beginning, this should be assessed and appropriate situation should be approached. Uh, definition and earth anthropometry to evaluate short stressors are similar to those in non thalassemic patients, but uh, the ethnic uh, pattern of growth velocity, if we have uh, in our hand, that should be very much helpful. But unfortunately, this is not available in our country. It is important to look for clinical signs or other endocrinopathy. So uh, it, is, it should again be, it should be very much clear that endocrinopathy should never uh, come alone. There should be, uh, should be clusters of endocrine disorder in patients with transmission dependent uh, thalassemia. A special attention should be given to peripheral blood count, ferritin, thyroid, and liver function test, calcium profile. OZTD should be done, and bone age, and, and if you can take a bit to assess coexisting comorbidities and, and, and endocrinopathies that affect growth. Growth hormone stimulation test is, is very essential, not only for this patient, when any, any patient we like to assess the growth hormone deficiency, the growth hormone stimulation test is the one, so the random or uh, better growth hormone assess, uh, assessment is not very useful. The treatment should be at this multiple factors, blood transfusion to maintain hemoglobin level above 9 gram per DL, chelation to, to attain serum ferritin level below 1,000 nanogram per milliliter, correction of nutritional deficiencies, in introduction of uh, induction of puberty and management of hypothyroidism, appropriate management of diabetes, and bone and liver cardiac disease should be done. In cases of growth hormone deficiency, recombinant growth hormone can be given, but it is important to consider that the recombinant growth hormone is a costly treatment procedure. Now, the diabetes mellitus, many of the patients with uh, transmission-dependent thalassemia will develop diabetes. The pancreas is one of the most uh, important, though not the first line, it's uh, the vulnerable organ to have the cirrhosis uh, and development of uh, diabetes by decreased production of insu uh, insulin by the pancreatic beta cell. So the, the, uh, this patient should not be diagnosed by doing hb on c the ODTT test should be done uh, for, to diagnose the patient. And the, after the diagnosis, the appropriate management starting from the uh, diet uh, as also uh, uh, applicable for other patients with diabetes. The dietary management, not only the calorie distribution, that should also focus the deficiency of other macro or micronutrients. So appropriate or balanced diet should be given to the patient. But many of the patients may 
be of uh, socioeconomic condition that should be again kept in mind and uh, the appropriate advice should be given keeping uh, the circumstances socio demographic circumstances of the patient and patient party hypoparathyroidism not very uncommon 9.9% around 10% and this is uh, if we consider the uh, in the uh, consider the common people this is extremely high but if we consider the other endocrinopathy this is a low level condition the hypoparathyroidism which is representation is similar to other causes but again it should it will come with the uh, with the part of the clusters of endocrinopathy so for this patient parathyroid level it should be assessed vitamin d level also should be assessed along with calcium and the diagnosis should be done also if needed we can go, we can go for uh, system use scan but for many cases it should not be it will not be required but the calcium supplementation uh, vitamin d supplementation should be done and the target uh, calcium level is 8.5 to 9 mg per dl thyroid dysfunction again uh, th thyroid dysfunction in common people is very common uh, for bangladesh it may be up to 25% uh, that, that will go, make the number of uh, 4 to 5 crores but among the patient with thalassemia uh, major or transfusion transfusion dependent yeah. thalassemia this, this may be the third or fourth common endocrinopathy so for those patients the appropriate measurement should be done uh, along with the clinical presentation of the patient. The test is FT4 and TSH, and after having the level, we should start the uh, replacement therapy. Thyroid cancer, along with other malignancies like hepatocellular carcinoma and hepato hematological malignancies are emerging issues for the thalassemia patients. And I also like to draw the attention of the senior uh, hematologist, the uh, chairperson, madam, and uh, my co-speaker to to say something on the later part about the, the cancer, thyroid cancer prevalence among patients with uh, uh, transmission dependent thalassemia. Adrenal insufficiency, this is not very common. This is the tail ender of the endocrinopathy. But if the patient is having endocrinopathy uh, comprising uh, adrenal insufficiency, this is a life-saving condition, so glucocorticoid replacement therapy should be done. If the patient present with uh, additional crisis, the 250 micro, uh, the test uh, treatment should be done with hydrocortisone. But many of the patient may require cyanexin test to confirm, along with other uh, uh, test and electrolyte test is very much a screening test. The patient will have wasting, uh, hypotension, and postural drop hyponatremia and uh, at the end, financial test will be positive. Osteoporosis is very important one. Beta thalassemia is associated with marrow expansion, osteopenia with, with cortical thickening, clavicular coarsening, and the bone deformity. Factors implicated in each cause include hypogonadism, diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, hypoparathyroidism, iron overload, and yeast treatment. Malnutrition per se can also contribute to cause osteoporosis. In men, the lumbar vertebrae and, and femoral leg are affected while in women, it is the spine to be affected more. Due to significant reduction in cortical and trabecular bone mineral density, pathological factors are commonly encountered in more than 20% of the cases. A multicenter study group in Tehran demonstrated that the prevalence of osteoporosis and osteopenia in the lumbar region uh, are 57% and 39% respectively, and the prevalence was 10.8 and 639 in, respectively in the femoral neck region. So this is very uh, high uh, rate. So the BMT uh, DEXA, this is the uh, first and foremost test, not only for the diagnosis, for the follow-up uh, monitoring, this can be also done, but along with vitamin D and calcium levels should be done. Uh, for uh, other cases, we also perform vitamin D assess, uh, in the, assessing the patient with osteoporosis. Now, endocrinopathy in non-transmission uh, non, uh, dependent thalassemia patient, this is not very common, but uh, after the 10 years and, and infrequent use of uh, transfusion, the, there is the increased chances of development of endocrinopathy, uh, not, if not severe. Uh, stages, there may be in milder form. 
now the follow up of the non transmission dependent thalassemia patient the, for the endocrine uh, endocrine patient or go to transition we can measure uh, height and bone age six monthly for hypogonadism channel staging annually diabetes for ogd is the best one annually hypothyroid for hypothyroidism f248 is annually for hypoparathyroidism calcium magnesium ipts vitamin d annually and for osteoporosis dextra bone scan annually now at the uh, uh, end to summarize the key points the management of endocrinopathy in transmission dependent thalassemia for hypogonadism most common endocrinopathy evaluation and treatment are the same as non thalassemic patient attention should be given to hypothyroidism anemia level of ferritin attention should also be given to liver function test before starting the uh, hormone replacement therapy for growth retardation usually manifests in the lateral part of the first decade of life cause is multifactorial with defects in both growth hormone secretion and uh, action clinical and hormonal evaluation should be done and treatment should address other complication of thalassemia growth rate is lower with growth hormone treatment for diabetes mellitus uh, this is not uh, very common in the early stages but after the age of 10 years this can be uh, frequently to uh, to be present cardiac is the ogd is the one we age beyond should be not to be that should, should not be performed as the hemoglobin a part of the hemoglobin epithelium this should be the erroneous insulin is the preferred treatment for those patients hypoparathyroidism uh, this should be checked and uh, diagnosed and managed appropriately thyroid function uh, again not for those patient this is very prevalent for those patient with uh, suspicion of uh, suspicion of having endocrinopathy thyroid function test should be done in this tft for and tsh adrenal function this is clinical present uh, this should be assessed by clinical presentation if needed appropriate test should be done or for osteoporosis this is also uh, more frequent than the common people so should be done by dexa so at the end this is the carry home message that endocrinopathy remain a common and unavoidable complication of thalassemia but we hope that this will be this will improve uh, very soon early detection of endocrine disorders and prompt referral to endocrinologist for appropriate treatment should be priority of physician uh, Uh, priority of the physician treating the patient the fact that thalassemia is actually a multi organ disorder should be kept in mind during the management and a collaborative approach of concerned specialists i have mentioned the name, groups is, is encouraged to improve the quality of life of the patient with thalassemia thank you all uh, for your kind attention